Welcome to Motherhood Unstressed, a podcast for anyone who wants to let go of stress and anxiety, take their power back, and learn how to create a truly beautiful life. Each week, I'm speaking with amazing individuals who are experts in the field of entrepreneurship, fitness, nutrition, motherhood, sex, and so much more. I'm your host, Liz Carlisle. I'm a mom, a blogger, and a certified health coach. I'm obsessed with personal growth and change, and I've helped women all around the world regain alignment with what they truly value in life and remove the blocks preventing them from living their life to the fullest. If you're ready to stop living a half-life and move fully into your power, then you're in the right place. Let's get started. Hey guys, in this episode, I'm speaking with documentary filmmaker John Whelan. He's behind the movie Stink on Netflix, and this is a film that examines how dangerous chemicals in American products pose a health risk to consumers. And when I watched the film a few weeks ago, I knew I would have to get him on the show to talk about this, to bring this into your field of awareness, because the majority of my listeners here are mothers, and it's up to us to be the gatekeepers into what comes into our home. So this is a very important episode. I think it's important that we wake up to what we're up against and that there is an element of secrecy and protection of these companies going on in our government and that we need to self-educate and be aware of what we're bringing in so that we can protect ourselves and protect our families. So if something in this episode resonates with you, please share it with a friend, share it on your Insta stories. I will share it out as well. And if you haven't already, please, please, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Just hit those five stars. That's all you need to do. Till next time. This episode is sponsored by Four Sigmatic. This is the Finnish company bringing you medicinal mushrooms, and I really enjoy the chaga, cordyceps, and lion's mane specifically. Um, I put it in my coffee every single morning with a little MCT oil, and it just gives me the energy and the jolt that I need to take on the day. Plus, I haven't been sick since last November, which is insane because I have two small boys, and I feel like we're always getting sick in this house, except for me because I take my mushrooms. Use the code UNSTRESSED at checkout to save 15% with Four Sigmatic. This episode is sponsored by Motherhood Unstressed CBD Supplements. Guys, these are the supplements that I created with the intention of helping you battle stress and anxiety in a natural way. My supplements are different in that they also contain ashwagandha and green tea. It's an all-in-one formula that combines beautifully to help you feel better and less stressed, which is something that mothers need more than anyone. So you can find these supplements uh, at motherhoodunstressed.com or if you're in Atlanta at Nuts and Berries or Roots Press Juices. Well, hey, John, I am so excited to have you on the show. This is a huge topic, and I loved your documentary. So welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me. So why don't we, just to get started, give our audience a little bit of context about you and the film. How did Stink come to be? So basically, a couple of years back, I, I have two daughters, and I bought them a pair of pajamas for Christmas. And so I, you know, I shop online because I'm I, it's just easier. <laughs> and so I got the pajamas in the mail. I opened up the box, and they had this really weird smell. So, you know, I'm thinking, are these things safe? So I called the company and they completely stonewalled me. Like, what are you talking about? And I was like, well, they have this really weird smell. Is it safe? And they said, we don't know what you're talking about. So I went to, actually went to the store and the pajamas on the rack had the same smell. So I was mm-hmm. like, okay, well, I'm not crazy. There's, there's definitely an issue here. And, and so the documentary is basically me trying to find out why these pajamas stink. And in doing so, I kind of go down the rabbit hole to show people how the system works. And, you know, spoiler alert, it doesn't work quite like we thought. Yeah, we're definitely going to get into that because I find that it's so surprising. You know, as I was watching the documentary and and it showed you, you know, trying to get the information of what is in these products and, and getting no answers and feeling like our government is supposed to protect us against harmful things and that that doesn't necessarily happen. I mean, it was really shocking to me. So when you were making the movie, what was the most surprising thing that you learned? I think the most surprising thing that I learned is that there's kind of this shadow system of lobbying that, you know, happens behind the scenes. So as a consumer, you're not aware of it. And, you know, the most shocking thing is that, you know, you find out there's all these bad things about these products, but none of these companies are breaking the law. The problem is the law is broken. And, you know, there's these pre-packaging and these brands that are iconic have been around forever. But when you really look behind the curtain at the chemicals 
that some of these that are in some of these products. It's just alarming. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that I think for me was the number one most surprising thing. Like you look at Johnson and Johnson and they just had that big lawsuit with baby powder. And has it always been this way? Or did you find that there was new legislation that was protecting this shroud of secrecy on these companies? Well, I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a, a hard question to answer. But, but I will say this. If you look even like pre-World War II, you know, after World War II, and as a, as a result of World War II, there was this kind of explosion in, in chemistry and consumer products. And I think that's where things kind of changed. And, and so now we find that we have, there are over 80,000 chemicals in commerce, and only a few hundred of them in, have been tested for safety by the EPA. And so I think that we're just exposed to more chemicals. And just to manage expectations, the, the reality is, a lot of people are chemophobic, meaning they're just they're afraid of chemicals. But most chemicals are safe. The problem is we don't have a system in place to take care of the chemicals that are that are unsafe. And so, and and typically the ones that are cheaper tend to be the most toxic. And because companies don't really have to disclose, they they use a lot of these kind of workhorse ingredients that just aren't safe. And so I think the problem's getting worse just because it's just more products. Uh, I think products aren't made as well as they're used as they used to be, and so people are just you know instead of <laughs> they're just throwing things out, buying new, and just not even mm-hmm. thinking about the exposure. Yeah, I mean it's scary. I mean you were very open in the documentary talking about the loss of your wife. You know she died of breast cancer. My sister has breast cancer, um, so I think and it's it's not a unique thing. You know you hear about it all the time. Um, for the mom listening here who just wants to do the best by her family, do the best Mm -hmm. job that she can, but maybe feels like overwhelmed, you know, like, I don't know what's safe. I don't know what's not safe. What do I do? What would you say to her? You know, that, that's a tough question. Um, I, I think that there's a, there's a couple of issues. One products that are more healthful, uh, tend to be more expensive. And so, you know, that's, that's like a social justice issue in itself. That's just not fair that you, that it should be a privilege to be able to afford safer products for your kids. But, but I think, you know, with, in general, if you look at, you look at, you know, babies that, that we have these products, if you, if you take, you know, one of the things that I uncovered in the film is this idea of the fragrance loophole. And I think that, you know, one thing that has happened, and I, I'm going to get back to your point. One thing that's happened in, let's say in the last 40 years, I mean, when I was growing up, like every people, a lot of people smoked. So every room smelled like smoke. And then people stopped smoking because it was, you know, it became unfashionable and there was legislation and lawsuits and all those kind of fun things. And, and so rooms didn't smell like smoke anymore. So what happened, I would say in the last 15 years, is that we've, we've taken artificial scent and made it basically a condiment in every product category. So everything has a unique scent. And that coupled with the fact that we're actually taking scent to create, I'm doing air quotes, experiences by pumping artificial odors through HVAC systems. So if you go to a hotel lobby, it has their signature scent. Even hospitals, museums are pumping the stuff. And wow. so we're just ex- inundated with these artificial scents everywhere. And, and so, you know that baby smell that everyone loves? Why on earth would you buy a lotion that has some sort of cheap petrochemicals so your baby smells like something that they're not? You know, and so I think that's like step one to answer your point. Like, just if you have a baby, just avoid all of these artificially scented products. They they're not doing you any good, and they're potentially doing harm. But I think you know, in general, with labels, fewer ingredients definitely mm-hmm. better. You know, the kind of stuff that your grandmother used to use probably better. It's it's tough. I mean, I I, I feel for you know my kids are a little older. You know, it just seems it gets more challenging because we're just, you know, everything, this is bad, that's bad, and you kind of don't know where to turn. And it's easy to say, like some people, uh, if you go up the sort of the socioeconomic scale, can shop their way around this problem and, and have the luxury of buying safer things. But if you live in a lower income community and the only products available, available to you and your, your child is at the dollar store, well, you're kind of out of luck, you know, because yeah. those products tend to be the worst. Um, you know, I, I wish I had that sort of magic bullet answer, say, here's the solution. But I, I think, you know, unfortunately, you know, people have to spend a lot of time doing their homework using, you know, resources like, you know, the Environmental Working Group, for example, has mm-hmm. a, a, an app called Skin Deep, and you can look at a product and they rate them. And, you know, because a lot of, a lot of people 
confuse recognition, meaning, oh, I recognize that brand, they're at the store, with, with trust. Yes. And, and they're kind of separate issues. You know, you may recognize a brand, and they might have a, a, a century-old formula, but they might be, it might be complete crap. You know, mm-hmm. And so there might be a much better brand that you've never heard of, but they're using more helpful ingredients. And so I think that's like a shift people have to make because at the end of the day, you know, I don't think a lot of people realize that if you just buy some conventional lotion or shampoo, it's primarily composed of just cheap petrochemicals. And most people don't know what that means. Well, here's what it means. They basically pull oil out of the ground. Okay, it's processed and it's converted into these chemicals that doesn't make them inherently bad. But I think it just changes the perception of a product. And I think that, you know, it gets even more confusing because people abuse the term like natural ingredients Mm -hmm. And, and natural has absolutely no legal definition. So you can call anything natural. So that doesn't really matter either. So it's it's not easy, like navigating this world. But, you know, and I think that's why retailers we're starting to see have to do a better job of curating products because they have to do that work for their customers because customers aren't going to, yeah, you don't, you shouldn't have to have a, chemi- a chemistry degree to buy a bottle of shampoo, you right. know, and but I, I mean, think and that, that's why I think that's so important. The work that you're doing, you're bringing, you're, you're expanding that field of awareness to a gen- the general population. I mean, that alone I think is, is turning heads and, and changing how people perceive things instead of just going to the store and grabbing something off the shelf, like you would, you do, you know, your whole life, you, you are now thinking about, well, what is actually in this? And, and yes, this is a brand I recognize, but what's in it, you know, what right. is natural? <laughs> what does that mean? You know? So that's yeah. amazing what you're doing. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, I, I look at like, I, I, my background is business. So I, I have a, I look at this through an economic lens And if you're a Procter & Gamble or Unilever or these large companies, everything is very price sensitive. You know, if you, if you just raise your price five to 10%, like people that people notice, you know, and they might buy something else. And these companies, these large multinationals, they don't want to reformulate their products because if you reformulate, it changes the way it smells. And that's so important because people, you know, like think of Tide, like, oh, I love people either say, I love the smell of Tide or I hate the smell of Tide. But, you know, we're so thrown off just the perception of these products. Like, you'll see these products advertised. It has a clean and fresh scent. Well, what the hell does that mean? Mm -hmm. You know, clean doesn't smell. Clean doesn't have a scent, actually. It smells like nothing. That's why it's clean. (laughs) You know, and when you look look at these products, or, or if you watch Stink, I think you look at the store shelf through a different lens, and hopefully as a smarter, savvier consumer. And, you know, these companies aren't going to solve the problem that most of their customers aren't even aware of. Mm. But the more people who know, the more people who become aware of it, they're going to have to start reformulating. Because what's going to happen is that safer products will be made by entrepreneurs um, from the outside, or they'll do it from the inside. But we will get safer products. And it's the more people that know, the faster that's going to happen. I totally agree with you. I mean, I completely agree with you. And I think that disruptors, you know, that are coming up, like entrepreneurship is a very hot career now. And, you know, it's a cool thing. And so, yeah, that is absolutely on the forefront. And I'm, I'm so excited to be a part of that, you know, and pushing it and bringing that awareness, just like you. Um, But when you were making the film, were you ever worried about your safety? Or did anyone threaten you or did you ever get any kind of friction when it when it became known that you were making a documentary like this um you know there are definitely people on the inside uh they believe it or not they don't like me um that's hard to believe but you know <laughs> they they they're very upset that it's on netflix now because it's one thing when someone is you know it's it's had success you know in theaters in new york and los angeles and then most documentaries go away after that but then it had, you know, it, had, it did pretty well online. But now that it's on Netflix, I mean, it's potentially in 100 million homes. So I think they're already reacting to that. And they don't like what I post online and they block me online. But, but I, don't, I don't fear for my physical safety. Um, because, you know, if I turn up in a body bag <laughs> and, and, and pieces in the Hudson River, I think we'll know who did it. <laughs> and that could be another good documentary, but I won't be around to uh, oversee no, it. No, no. <laughs> so how has your life changed since the release of the documentary? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if my life has, has changed significantly as a, as a function of releasing the documentary. It's interesting 
just like relationship with the friends, like you go to someone's house and they'll kind of give you this funny look. And you're like, Oh my God, I'm embarrassed for you to see, you know, what's in my laundry room or this or my <laughs> bathroom. I don't even want you to go in there. And I'm just like, relax. I'm not that guy, you know? And, and I, I think that's part of the thing. Like, I don't, I don't expect people and, and it's, it's none of my business. People, if people get this information that's in stink and they want to make changes, that's great. If they don't, that's up to them. I mean, my biggest, my biggest thing is that at least, you know, you know, because, if you don't know what you don't know, well, you don't even have the opportunity to, mm-hmm. to make changes. And, and that's my whole thing is, you know, about transparency, ingredient transparency, because if companies had to disclose all the chemicals in their products, then consumers would make better choices about what they bought. And people who made products would make better choices about the chemicals that they sold. Uh, and, and that's, that's the key. And because unfortunately, just like anything else, whether it's climate, you know, there's never going to be 100% certainty on is chemical X safe or not. You know, you could fund a study that will say it's, it's, it's fine. Um, and, and unfortunately, the way con- Congress works, until there's certainty, they don't really have to act and they have political cover. Mm-hmm. So my thinking is, you know, just disclose everything. Because I think that if they disclosed everything, then the perception of the product would change. And, I, and, and that's key. And if the other issue is that, I was saying earlier about retailers, they need to do a better job of curating products. You know, it's not just throw it on the shelf and, and sling it out the door. Um, right now, they can pretend they don't know that there's some dodgy chemicals in these, ingredi- in these products. But if they had to disclose all the ingredients, then the retailers would have to do a better job curating. And, and that's, that's like more realistic to me because mm-hmm. I think that Amazon or Walmart, they could change this problem. They could fix this problem tomorrow. They could send out a memo to all their vendors and say, hey, guys, in the next 18 months, you have to take these 1,200 chemicals that have been identified as the worst of the worst out of all your products. No hard feelings. If you don't want to do that, we won't sell your products. And that would move the market. I have more confidence in that happening, a market-based solution, than having to lobby our dysfunctional Congress to get them to agree on something. More of a stick than a carrot. Right. Right. <laughs> I love it. So it kind of leads me to my next question is, what do you want your legacy to be, whether it's through this film or, you know, the work that you do after the film? I mean, I think in terms of the film, like, like I said, I, I think that it's, it's, it's a really complicated issue. I, I mean, I could, this could take an hour to answer. I'm going to give you the, because, and, and here, here's why I'm saying that. There, there's so many different angles. It's, it's not just about the product and without going off the rails right now there's, you know, citizens, there's an issue of money in politics. And, and as a result of that, you know, the, with the right amount of money, you can keep the wrong system in place. And the thing is with these chemicals, it, it's not like you're using shampoo and then you're keeling over in the shower and dying. It's about a lot of exposures from a lot of different products, which in aggregate, we're seeing a lot of different strange health, health outcomes and the last couple of decades that we've never seen before. Mm-hmm. And there has to be some correlation. And although you can't pinpoint exactly what's going on, you still need to do something. And, and what's happening is like, I think that the industry, what they're saying is, well, let's, let's figure out what's going on before we do anything. And you kind of can't have it both ways. It's already too late. Once we're hundred so percent certain of anything, it's already too late. Mm-hmm. You know, if we wait for hundred percent certainty on climate, then, you know, it's game over. And so I, I, guess, I guess my, you know, you question your legacy. I, I think it has to be about transparency. I mean, that's, that's the thing. Like, it, it, and this is like basic stuff. And, and the, the thing that's kind of annoying is that a lot of these people in this industry make this sound like transparency is this, this strange European thing or something that tree huggers want. Mm-hmm. It's like, guys, no, it's not. It's, there's a guy named Adam Smith, the father of economics, he said that unless buyer and seller need access to the same information in order to have a functioning marketplace. And so that's why, to me, it's all about transparency. You're either disclosing or you're not. That's binary. You can argue about whether this chemical's good or this one's bad or this product's good or this one's bad. Just disclose all the ingredients. And I think that's, that's kind of the, a prerequisite for change on any front. And I, I think that's the opportunity, too, going back to entrepreneurs. If these companies... Are going, they're digging their heels and they want to reformulate. I hope that some entrepreneur somewhere is, is knocking off every single product on the market right now with a better, safer, healthier version of it. 
I think it'll happen. I absolutely do. Because now there's a need and there's an awareness around it. Absolutely. Awesome. So I do have some rapid fire questions for you if you're ready. Sure. Okay. The world needs. Oh, I guess I didn't give you a rapid fire answer. (laughs) The world needs chemical disclosure. I believe in. Chemical disclosure. (laughs) I'm grateful for. Um, Entrepreneurs. And what's something that you've learned in life that you wish someone would have told you earlier on? People don't change after they're 12. (laughs) I think I saw that in Stand By Me. (laughs) Care to expand on that with your own life experience? Uh, No, I I, I think I'm I'm being somewhat facetious, but I I think that you kind of get, I think there's some truth to it. I I think people have this mindset and they kind of just at some point stop. And, And it's even, you know, like, you know, the concept of cognitive dissonance, like people, they kind of don't want to believe, like, if you look at this pretty bottle of shampoo and it's in your thing and someone says there's something bad in it, even though you suspect they're probably right, you kind of don't want to believe it, Mm -hmm. you know, and and that's, that's dangerous because I think that that allows people to get away with doing bad things. And there's enough stuff going on in this world that I think that people, you know, just give people the truth. You know, it's just uh, what they do with it. That's another issue. Just give them the information and let them decide, you know, instead of allowing someone else to make the decision for them. I love that. I love that. That's so empowering, you know, for everyone listening. You just empowered them. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, I I think that, you know, because right now, I think we have a false sense of security with all these products. And we're not, we're not, when it comes down to it, choosing the chemicals we're exposed to, the chemical industry is choosing for us. And again, they're not breaking the law. The law is broken. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's really not much of an effort to fix it uh, because it's complicated. And I I, I say, I say to people sometimes, if this Friday night, tonight at eight o'clock, tune in, there's going to be a 30 minute show. We're going to unlock the mysteries of the universe. Everything you've often ever wondered, we're going to disclose tonight at eight. It's going to be a half hour. Tune in. Now you'd think the whole world would tune in. Okay. Five minutes before that happens, breaking news, Kylie Jenner is going to be giving live birth to her triplets. <laughs> now, what do you think that does for viewer, viewership of unlocking the mysteries of the universe? I don't want to believe 50, it. <laughs> is it 50-50? I think it might be a 50-50 split. <laughs> oh, they hear about it after the birth. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, this was so much fun. Um, so what's the best way for our listeners to connect with you and the Stink movie? You know, as, as you mentioned, like Stink is on Netflix, which is great. So I hope as a lot of people watch it. And our Instagram account, um, we, we try to keep a bit of a sense of humor because, you know, a lot of these things, like it's kind of a downer to talk about these chemicals. So we try to, I, I, I think that humor is a good thing. And, and so I try to make it a little funny, a little snarky. But, you know, anyone who knows me knows I'm not that, I'm not the angry person. I'm more like trying to <laughs> be light about it because people don't want to hear, here's another thing that's bad for me. So we kind of like make fun of things in, in a positive way in, in the hopes of, of bringing change, you know. And I think that even like some of these companies that we, we go after, we're doing it in a funny way because I think at the end of the day, the people at all, even these large companies, they're good people with families. And, and they're not, no one's going to work and saying, how can I poison kids? Right. You know, it's not like that. But it's just that, you know, you get set in your ways and the direction of a lot of these companies are dictated by lobbyists in D.C. that are keeping these bad policies in place. And so I don't think most people, these large companies, they're just doing good work. They don't even know about this. Mm. You know, so I hope they watch it too. It's no, it's not a... Uh, you know, we're not saying that there's anything wrong with them. It's, it's like, like I said, they're, I'm sure they're good people with families. It's, and I think that a lot of people can get something out of it. And, and hopefully the people, if your job is you put on your shoes in the morning, walk out the door and uh, you're going to lobby to keep carcinogens and kids products. Well, then you should be exposed. You know, you, you should feel guilty. And so yes. you, ha- you deserve whatever's coming to you. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Oh, this is such a pleasure. Thank you so much, John. And Oh, uh, sure. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Absolutely. I think you've really shed some light where it needed to be shed. So thank you. Great. Thank you. 
Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode with John. I hope you got a ton out of it and learned a lot. If you haven't already, definitely check out his documentary Stink on Netflix. It's so good and so well done. You're definitely going to enjoy it. Also, if you think a friend could benefit from hearing this episode, share it with them. If they have no clue about the system that we're in and and these toxic chemicals that we're being exposed to, share it with them because that could change their lives and their family's lives for the better. Also, if you haven't already, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes. Just hit those five stars. That's all you got to do. And also, last request, tag me in your Insta stories uh, when you're listening to this episode, and I will tag you in mine. My Instagram is motherhoodunstressed. Talk to you soon. This episode is sponsored by Four Sigmatic. Use the code UNSTRESSED at checkout and you will receive 15% off. I love the mushroom blends. I like the chaga and the lion's mane. It gives me energy, focus, and I know I'm helping my immune system because I haven't been sick in a year. It's crazy. Also, this episode is sponsored by Organifi. Organifi is my new favorite product to put in all of my smoothies. Instead of having to juice and buy a bunch of vegetables, I literally just put the green juice into my smoothie blend and I'm getting all the greens I need for the day. Again, you can use the code UNSTRESSED at their checkout for 15% off.